Quarterbacks coach Dave Pettner will put that right up for questions for Coach Pettner. Coach, you, you mentioned that competition is keen. Tell us what the, the quarterback room is like now with uh, the new guys and Jordan. Jordan and, uh, well, I mean, you can't help but notice that, you know, they're imposing guys when, when you look in the room. It's a, it looks a little bit different, you know what I mean? The guys have great size and, 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 uh, and they have good pedigrees coming out of high school, but that, you know, that remains to be seen when you get down to college campus. The great thing about those guys is they've pushed the envelope for the older guys to have to study and really understand what they're doing. And, and conversely, the older guys have done a great job of teaching the young guys. So it's, it's a good room. It's a very cohesive bunch of guys. Uh, they understand that only one guy is going to be on the field at one time, but everybody's kind of pulling for each other. It's, they're all really competitive guys. Um, but they, they really do a great job of trying to help each other, understand, study, watch tape, push each other that way. So, you know, competition is king around here, and, and you know, that's what we're trying to create in every position. You have sort of <clears throat> two types of quarterbacks. You have the two kind of freaky guys and Jeff and, and James, and then Jordan and Tucker seem more of like the kind of traditional, you know, Kind of gamers understanding that kind of thing. Is that kind of how you see them, or is it a little more complicated? No, I mean, I would hope that all four of them could do both. You know, that's that's what we kind of try to recruit is guys that are good athletes that could stand in the pocket and throw it. You know, James's ability to throw in the pocket is way better than it was last year, just for simply from an understanding standpoint. Um, and then, you know, Jeff is really good athletically, obviously, but. Um, you know, he's he's capable of being both, and Tucker's great on tape. You know, all, all of those guys are good at, you know, being able to do both. In this offense, you have to be able to run and throw. Um, you know, we, we saw, you know, James pull one on a zone read and went 65 yards down the sideline with one, and, you know, guys are throwing touchdown passes. So, you know, it's a, it's a good group. It's a good mix, but we'll never have one guy that can just do one thing. I mean, that, that just makes you so limited offensively. So we're trying to develop them on both ends. James today on the seven and seven down here, he had some really nice throws downfield. And, and guys, what does that mean exactly at this point? It means it was an awesome throw and an awesome read. <laughs> and um, the biggest development with those guys is their understanding of what we're doing. I mean, we are. I don't even know what the percentage is. Two million percent better than we were this time last year. Just from an understanding, you know, of what we're doing and where to go with the ball and what defenses are doing and you know, how to manipulate the defense and those type of things. And when you have the confidence of understanding, um, you could just go back and play, know where the ball's going to go and let it rip. I mean, they're all really talented guys, but, you know, when you can when you can eliminate doubt in your mind as a quarterback, that's the key. And right now they're playing at a really high level. I guess going off of that, what were some things that you were doing at this point last year that you're not having to do at this point this year? Teach uh, everything, you know, teach football teach coverage um, fronts, how to adjust uh, how to adjust coverages, um, you know, how to adjust protections, you know, what does this formation do? How do people align to this formation? I mean, it was like ground zero grassroots football at this time last year, just a general understanding of formations and just base concepts of passes and how to check runs and how to check pass. You know, right now, I mean, the guys are you know they're coming up. They're sliding protections. They're, you know, adjusting the runs. They're, you know, they're checking. I don't know, we might have checked, you know, uh, maybe half of the practice today. Um, so they're just their overall development and understanding of what we're doing has grown so much that now they can have more and more on their plate. Does that understanding allow you to do more with the offense than maybe you could last year? No, absolutely. I mean, at this point, at this point last year, we probably had. Maybe maybe a third of what we have in right now for day two. Um, and, and the understanding for our guys is, listen, man, at, at any point in any of these practices, I should be able to call any play in our playbook and we should be able to run it. You know, so last year we was just like, okay, if we're in two by two, this is what we call it, and this is where you line up. These are your base alignments. Now they just run out there and get lined up, and, and our base stuff is – you know the execution has been really good. You know I think there was only two or three mental busts the whole, the whole time on on Tuesday. Um, you know that practice, that number one practice uh, last spring, uh, we might have had ten plays where we didn't have a bust. So I mean it's a we're a light years ahead of where we were. In terms of the spread aspect of the offense, <clears throat> last year you had to play a lot of tight ends to just kind of make up for deficiency of the offensive line. But now you have more guys back. You have some transfers coming in and. Some young guys as well, kind of, does that allow you to be more flexible in terms of what you're doing and not have to be so tight end and heavy? What, our guys up front? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you just take a look at the guys, if you took a before and after picture 
of the guys, even the guys that are back now. I mean, when, when we came in day one last year, our first practice in the spring, Zach Quinney was our starting left tackle at 262 pounds. Now he weighs with 305. I mean, they've done an amazing job. You know, Luke Carella does an amazing job with those guys, just putting on weight, understanding that is how to put on good weight, their strength gains are really good. You know, we were talking earlier, Ryan Johnson, you know, solidifying, you know, in there as a transfer at, at right guard. I mean, the guy's 6'5", 310 pounds. I mean, you know, big people move little people. I mean, that's that's just a basic principle of, of football, right? So, you know, we look a lot different, and, it, and, and when their understanding is a lot different, um, then they play a lot faster. So, you know, it doesn't look like it did last year because guys just understand more. They play faster. They're on guys better. Um, there's not as many guys getting cut loose. And, you know, the ones that, you know, were kind of getting cut loose today were some of the younger guys. You know, we have three freshman offensive line in there, well, you know, with the second group. So, you know, sometimes they go the wrong way. Well, that's going to happen when you're in your first, first part of the season. But, um, those guys up front allow you to do a lot of different things, and you know we'll just keep building on that. It looked like uh, Jeff had most of the time with the C's today. Will you uh, alternate that with, with him and Tucker? How will you? Uh, yeah. So Tucker Tucker threw a, a bomb in practice to, to end the practice on Tuesday, right. and he was jogging down. He rolled his ankle, so he was limited today. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I said, "What were you doing? Jumping up and down, and you know, uh, celebrating your first college touchdown?" He's like, "No, I was just running," and I. You know, I rolled an ankle, and I was like, dude, you need a better story than that. <laughs> like, you, like you went down, you dunked on somebody or something. You can't just say you roll, you know, you rolled your ankle running down there. But, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be in. And, and then we mix, we mix both of those guys. Uh, all four of those guys really were, were rolling through. Uh, today, um, Jordan Yates went with the, the one group, and James was with the twos, and they kind of mix in. And we'll just keep mixing those guys in. I mean, it's the amount of reps that we get in a practice is exhausting to begin with. So, you know, they're not they're not missing out on anything. With Jeff and Tucker, what are some things, not football-wise, that the general public need to know about who they are? Uh, maturity, um, football background, um, you know, those guys are like the equivalents of gym rats. If they were basketball guys, they'd be gym rats. You know what I mean? Um, I never had to call them to say, hey, you know, uh, the film's up. Hey, you know, I'll be around later. You know, they were, they're sponges. They want to, you know, they want to absorb as much information as they possibly can. They're in there all the time. You know, those, you know, I'm at the point where I'm like, dude, do you ever go to class? I mean, what are you, what are you guys doing? And they're like, they would literally go to class, go eat, come back and watch tape, go eat, come back and watch tape. Um, and they would be in there at, you know, 4.30 in the afternoon. They'd be there at 9 o'clock in the morning um, just trying to absorb as much information as they possibly can. And it really shows um, because there, there's been no slow down. This is hey, the young guys are in and we're going to run like the base play. I mean, they're checking runs, they're checking passes, um, and we just basically push them off the end of the dock and get in the deep water and you got to learn how to swim. Um, and that's the really cool thing right now is we're not, we're not slowing down for anybody. I mean, the tempo of our practices is unbelievable, and, you know, we just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, keep adding more and more in. Um, and there's going to be some mistakes, but, I mean, we're playing pretty clean football. Yates is a guy who... Kind of thrown into the fire, you know, basically had just fall camp, and then he ended up as your backup quarterback at the very end of the season. Kind of what have you seen from him in terms of both absorbing the offense and kind of his competitiveness? Yeah, I mean, both of those things are off the charts, you know, off the charts. He is really, really smart. He's a football guy. He loves football. I mean, I could see him being a, you know, being a football coach. I mean, that's like, that's how his mind works. You know, he wants to know all of the nuances. He wants to know why we're running something. He doesn't just run out there and say, hey, we're running this, you know, this four vertical scheme or whatever. He wants to know why are we calling that against that defense? Um, you know, his preparation is tremendous. He had a great off season workout and he's ultra competitive. Really all of those guys are ultra competitive. And, you know, going back to that last question, those two young guys got into the winter workouts and they attacked it. Um, and, you know, the first day Jeff went out there and he was kind of like shell shocked a little bit about what was going on. And, I, you know, we were giving him the business about, you know, hey, you better be ready to go. You better, you know, and then after that, he was those guys were killers. I mean, they went out there and, you know, they would pick up that rope and go tug of war. You know, and there was no hesitation by either one of those guys to pick the rope up. And, you know, they would go, you know, they're going after really good players. You know, they're going against, you know, uh, you know, linebackers and, and, and guys that are, you know, established guys. They were going against Tariq. They were going against Jerry Howard. 
you know, um, guys because they're bigger guys, right? So they're bigger matchups against some of those some of those uh, established guys. So, you know, their their work ethic and the tenacity in that group is really really good. Now and that, you're uh, now that James and Jordan have the experience last season since the belt, have you seen them both kind of enter the spring with a little bit more confidence? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, understanding and knowledge creates confidence, right? And as a quarterback, when you're confident in what you're doing and you're not looking around trying to figure out what's going on and you've shrunk all of that information into a small box, then you could play really fast. So their development and their understanding is so far from what it was even at the end of last year. I mean, they did an unbelievable job of working. They would come in every day. And, you know, for an hour and a half, I'd be sitting there hanging out and doing what I'm doing. And they'd come in there and they'd be watching tape. And, you know, they'd come in on their own. It was no, hey, you guys got to be there at this time. They'd come in on their own and they'd say, hey, coach, what's this? And we would talk about that. And then the, you know, the four of those guys would just sit there and hash it out. Um, and then the, the really cool thing is, you know, Ryan Lance and Liam Byrne, the two walk-on guys in that room also, and they are uber smart football guys. So they're helping the younger guys. So all six guys are kind of, you know, chopping it up, going back and forth. And now those guys have such more understanding of what we're doing. And then when you play with confidence, with the quarterbacks, you always talk about play with your feet on the ground, right? Don't be bouncing around like, you know, just get your feet in the ground, understand what you're doing and, and let the ball rip. And I think, you know, for the most part, we've done that over the first couple of days. With your two back sets, uh, <clears throat> other than Jordan, how are the other running backs progressing? That's a really, really good group. You love the running back question, man. That's your, that's your question. You love that group. We're going to be able to – we might put five of them out there for you. Uh, they're really good. They're a really good group, man. They, they – you know, you have the guys that are here, um, and then you have a really special freshman coming in. That's going to be a really deep group of guys. Um, I mean, you could play five or six of those guys and feel really good about it. I mean, we um, – you know, we moved um, Bruce uh, Jordan swelling over. I mean, he's, he's an ACC back, you know what I mean? And Dante put on a lot of weight, a lot of strength, a lot more confidence. Devin Ellison is really super. I mean, those are guys that, you know, are not in the limelight as much as, you know, maybe Jemias and JP. Um, but that's a really deep group and really fun for me to be able to, uh, you know, find ways to use that, you know, personnel grouping. Um, and they're they're all grown in their understanding now. So it's not just that you have to play them in the backfield. You can play them in the slot. You can motion them around, and they're all really good athletes. So, you know, finding them uh, touches is going to be you know a fun challenge. What were, your, what were your thoughts when Jordan and Bruce went to switch? I mean, you know, Bruce has always said, "Hey, I'm a running back coach. Hey, I'm a running back coach." I'm a running, you know, and he's like, "All right, cool. You know, let's come in and you know, let's see what you're doing and you know how you can do it." And um, it was funny. We put him in a couple of things last year just to see we we're messing around, and he got in a drill with like, "Hey, Bruce, you carry the ball here. You you carry the ball here." And he went in and like ran dudes over. You know, so I was like, "All right, I'm happy with that." Um, and ultimately, you have to kind of just feel. You know what those guys are, are feeling and say hey you know i want my shot to be able to do that and we said look we'll give you a shot to do what you can do and we'll, we'll make an evaluation and it'll be a true evaluation if you can help us then you know we'll find a role for you we'll stick you in there and you'll do great things if not then you need to play linebacker or wherever it is and it's kind of that way with a lot of guys on the team you know what i mean you, you kind of look at guys you're like all right jerry howard you know was playing running back now he goes over and plays linebacker well you know there's a fit for him there and now he's just got to, you know, both of those guys kind of just have to learn the system. So, you know, it's kind of like looking at your roster top to bottom and seeing where the best fits are. Here's big picture when you kind of went back at last year and did your dive on all, everything. Yeah. What were some of the kind of the key takeaways of here's how we can get better and here's what we should have done better last year? I mean, we, we were top to bottom. We needed to get better across the board. You know, I thought we ran, at the end of the year, we ran the ball well. I thought James handled the run game well. Um, I thought we were really explosive and diverse in what we were doing in the run game with the reads and the bubbles and all of those type of things. We did not throw the football well at all. We had to put a lot of emphasis on that. It started, you know, it starts up front with the protections and the quarterback's understanding, wideouts catching the ball and, and that type of thing. So we put a lot of emphasis on our pass game. You know, historically, we've been really, really good throwing the ball. We've set numerous records throwing the ball, and that was disappointing. Um, 
you know, our competitiveness was really good. You know, our toughness was good. We just needed to, you know, be able to fine tune a lot of those things. Um, and then we needed to play faster. You know, when we when we came back and we looked at it, we were just we we just got bogged down so much playing, you know, on our heels too much. So we want to be an up tempo attacking offense. That's a multiple spread attacking fun you know, type of offense. And I, I thought we kind of lost our personality with that a little bit. And then we have to do a better job on, you know, not being three and out. I mean, you know, we were terrible statistically in the country being three and out. And, you know, the goal is get one first down. If you can get one first down, you're going to move the chain. If you could get two first downs per possession, you're not always going to score, right? You know, if you get the ball 12, 13 times, you score five times, right? You're scoring 35-ish a game with just five possessions. You're going to get 12 or 13. So that means you're going to have to punt the ball at some point. But we want to be able to have the ability to kick the ball. We want to be, be able to possess the ball. So we did a pretty good job of not turning the ball over. But, you know, if you have to punt, that's fine. You have to punt. But get a couple first downs, move the chain, move the field, and then punt. We got an All-American punter. Let the kid go knock the ball down the side to 10 and then start over again and then feel you know play the field position game i just felt like we were you know we were too much you know three and out three and out three and out and then we we're putting the defense in a bad position so you know those are some of the things that we talked about early on to uh, this this spring one last one here <clears throat> jalen camp was a guy that you didn't really get to see a healthy version of last year but it seems like he's rebuilt his body again and <laughs> yeah. he, he looked phenomenal yeah he's amazing. phenomenal man he's phenomenal i mean you know i don't know what they must have put some kind of bionic thing in his in his leg but he's He's, I mean, his fitness level is incredible. He's always been a really jacked up dude, really good looking dude. But his lower half on how he's moving, his movement patterns are exceptional. And he's so strong that when you try to put your hands on him, he could throw you off. But now his footwork matches his frame. So if you try to get off of him and jump back off of him, he can dance and make you miss. You know, so he could play with power or with quickness. Um, and he's, I mean, He's always been exceptional, being able to hang on to the line and go get the deep ball and that type of thing. But, you know, just his overall quickness and really, again, his understanding of what we're doing is allowing him to play so much quicker. It's like this time last year, we would say, hey, we're running Patriot. And they'd be like, oh, what's Patriot again? What's Patriot again? And then the ball would be snapped because we're trying to play fast. Now we yell Patriot and everybody just gets lined up and they're confident in what they're doing and they're able to go. So, you know, it's not only a physical thing, but it's an emotional and, you know, mental thing that these guys are, you know, playing so much faster than they did this time last year. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Appreciate All right, guys. it. Appreciate it.